The Adopt a River program continues to expand in reach and purpose as we seek to improve the health of watersheds in Trinidad and Tobago. The pandemic allowed us to adapt during the work from home period and also encouraged us to think innovatively about ways in which we can still execute our mandate for changing the public's perception about water. There have been challenges, but the implementation unit remained committed to the task. New outreach programs, along with new delivery styles, were adapted for an online interface with more content delivered in a short time frame to ensure effective engagement with our audience. To give more insight into the program's accomplishments and adaptations during the past year, please welcome the project manager of the Adopter River program, Ms. Avril Alexander. The Honorable Minister of Public Utilities, Mr. Marvin Gonzalez, Chairman of the Water and Sewage Authority, Mr. Navindra Nanga, CEO of the Water and Sewage Authority, Mr. Shulan Shepard, Senior Manager of the Water Resources Agency and Chair of the Adopter River Steering Committee, Mr. Keith Mead, Program Coordinator of the Green Fund Executing Unit, Ms. Simone Brown, Representatives from Government Ministries and Agencies, Representatives of the Water and Suit Authority, specially invited guests and presenters, good morning. I'm Avril Alexander, the Project Manager of the Adopt River Program, and it's my pleasure today to share with you an overview of the work that the unit has been doing over the last year. As you know, the mandate of the program is to bring awareness to watershed issues in Trinidad and Tobago. The Adopt River Program supports the overall initiatives and policies of the government of Trinidad and Tobago, including Vision 2030, which runs from 2016 to 2030, and outlines the priorities of the government in lines with the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, under Vision 2030, Team 5 speaks to investing in sound infrastructure and the environment, and further goes on to state that the environment will be valued as a national asset and conserve for the benefit of future generations and the wider international community. So we see there in the graphic that it says, placing the environment at the center of social and economic development. And I'll share with you how the Adult River Program fits into this mandate. The objectives of Team 5 include conserving and enriching the vitality and diversity of our natural environment, instilling an attitude of care and respect for the environment among all citizens, um, preventing, reducing, and where possible, recycling all forms of waste and empowering stakeholders. How do these line up with the Adult River Program? Among our objectives are to identify watershed degradation issues, to engage with stakeholders to identify projects to address these issues, collaborate with government agencies, NGOs, communities, and others to implement projects, and educate citizens on water pollution and management issues. We are also geared towards fostering a culture change towards appreciating the environment. So as we can see, our program clearly supports the mandate of Vision 2030 when it comes to environmental management. Some of our focus areas include waste reduction and prevention, including recycling programs, um, cleanups, anti-littering campaigns, water conservation and management, which includes water reuse, rainwater harvesting, uh, environmental protection projects such as tree planting, uh, erosion and runoff reduction, water quality monitoring, education and awareness through outreaches, media campaigns, water warriors trainings and so on, and capacity building on watershed management. So over the last year, um, the Adult River Program, we kicked off the year by focusing a bit inwardly at the, the skills and capacity within the unit. We wanted to make sure that the unit, the staff of the unit had the skills and the knowledge necessary to undertake projects and really to, um, to take a Dutch River to the next level. So we had a series of guest speakers come visit us. We had Mr. Wayne Clement, who was the previous vice chair of the Dutch River Steering Committee. We made a side visit to a vetiver project in Santa Cruz. This project is managed by the IM movement, and we'll have a presentation from them later on today. Um, we also had visits from the Forestry Division, followed by site visits to the demonstration site at St. Michael's Road, where we learned about um, water runoff and how we can reduce runoff on hillsides, how we can control erosion, and generally land and water management. 
Uh, we also had some training on watershed assessments, which was done by Ms. Marissa McMillan. And um, we also had WASA Corporate Communications Unit come into us to share how they approach social media management. Among our main activities over the year was water quality testing and training. Um, over the years, Adata River has been identified as one of the agencies with the, the skills and the knowledge in water quality testing. And many persons reach out to the, to the program for assistance in this regard. We have several schools, including um, the University of the West Indies. We have Northeastern College, Holy Cross College, and our staff go in with them, um, teach them how to collect samples, the correct methods for doing so, and also how to test those samples and um, to, to evaluate the results. We also had Water Warriors training for several police youth clubs within Trinidad and Tobago, um, including the Repo Group, Disney, Twin City, Maracas, Matlat, and so on. We train nature seekers and the San Grande Conservation Group on water quality testing and sampling, and also the CDE. We continue our program of solid waste cleanups. If we reference the um, Vision 2030, we clearly saw there that uh, managing solid waste is one of the, the aims of Vision 2030. And our program aims to conduct solid waste cleanup um, not only to enhance the physical environment and to prevent solid waste from getting into our waterways, but also as a means of raising, the, um, raising awareness among communities of the issue and hopefully in this way fostering in them um, that idea that they should not be dumping, they should not be um, indiscriminately throwing things into the waterways or even nearby. So our cleanups, these, um, this is the purpose of why we continue to do cleanups. We know that the, it's a very challenging issue, and it's one that we can't address alone, but we're hoping that slowly um, communities become more aware and that we can see some behavior change in the future. So over last year, we did 13 cleanups in total. They were spread quite widely around the country, including in Maruga, Aripo, um, Chagaramas, um, Salibia, El Socorro. The El Socorro cleanup took place on the banks of the Karani River just before it flows out into the ocean. A very interesting um, location there. Um, when you see the amount of garbage that comes down the Karani River, you get a clearer sense of how large of an issue that we're facing when it comes to people dumping and when it comes to garbage getting into our waterways from the streets or from drains. Our public outreaches are meant to go into communities, um, share information, educate the public, Again, it's aimed towards increasing knowledge, changing attitudes, and changing behaviors. We did 10 in-person public outreaches this year, last year, I should say. Um, we had 21 online outreaches. These were targeted mostly at secondary schools. We also did the Scouts Jamboree, and we trained a group online, the Pinal Debe Foundation. The program also did a presentation at the IWRCS conference in March last year. Um, we also had a boot at the event. The Minister of Public Utilities held a public consultation in Lopino, and the Adopt River program was invited to both have a boot and make a presentation. Information shared there was really um, of interest to the community, and there was a lot of questions about the quality of their water, questions about environmental degradation, and so on. And we were able to share with them um, some of the issues faced by the community and also plans that the program has for the village of Lopino. Adat River runs several competitions throughout the year, and we found that these competitions are a great way to get persons involved and to pique their interest. We usually utilize social media to run these competitions where we invite the public and in the case of River Speak, we invite primary schools and secondary schools to participate in these events. So what it does is raise awareness generally on the issues, raise awareness on the Dr. River program and get persons to actively become involved. Um, some of the programs like the quiz competition, quiz time competition, engages with our audience and um, they have to seek out information, and in this way they're learning, they're actively learning and searching for information that is relevant to increasing their awareness of the issues we face in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so, just to point out, I mentioned the River Speak competition, 
We had Chris time, which usually runs around December. And we also have a water and the environment competition where a person submit their artwork. This year, for the first time, we were able to also have an, um, an art exhibition at the Green Market where some of the pieces that were submitted to us were put on display at the Green Market. Social media, of course, has become even more important as we experienced the pandemic over the last two years. And a lot of our work, we've had to find innovative ways to use technology and to reach our audiences when we couldn't get to them in person. So um, there are regular campaigns on social media. We would celebrate special events such as World Environment Day, such as World Rivers Day. Um, we'd also post regular what do you do you know, did you know sessions where um, little tidbits are shared with the public. And if you look at the graph, you can see that we've had a very good response on social media. We're seeing that um, our hits and our view viewership is increasing. And this is just a snapshot up until August last year. Um, but we definitely see that uh, we've been able to expand the use of social media and capture more people through these means. Some of the projects that we are engaged in include tree planting events. We had a large event in commemoration of World Rivers Day where the Forestry Division donated approximately 100 trees to us and we in turn shared those with our community groups and they planted them at various locations within the country including in Tobago. Another project we did was a, a water supply project in Dago Martin where we provided a, a tank farm system um, to the communities there. They do not receive a, a regular supply of water. It's quite a hilly community bordering on Paramin and um, we were able to supply a couple of tanks to the communities and these are filled and maintained by the regional corporation so that they, there's an ease on the community in terms of their access to water. We're also engaging in a couple of slope and riverbank stabilization projects. In Aripo Village, the picture to your right, um, we currently have a project with the IM movement where we're stabilizing a landslide, two landslide spots in Aripo Village by planting vetiver plants under the vetiver system, which Jonathan Barkant would give us more information on a bit later. And in um, Lopino Village, we are stabilizing um, an eroding riverbank that is endangering a couple of homes in the community and has changed the course of the river and leads to flooding at times. We're also doing rainwater harvesting projects and to share a bit more on this, we actually are engaged in a national rainwater harvesting program in conjunction with the Ministry of Public Utilities. The objective of the program is to alleviate the water supply woes of communities and to build their resilience to climate change and natural resources. The target of the project is to build these systems in 10 communities throughout Trinidad and Tobago um, with an average of 10 systems per communities over the next year. Partnering in this initiative is Habitat for Humanity, which will be responsible for the actual physical works to be done, the construction of the um, rainwater harvesters, and also they will assist in training the community, building their capacity for um, disaster preparedness. We're also gonna have NEHERS on board, as well as the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government um, through the ODPM. Some of our pipeline initiatives that we're engaging in this year, uh, um, some more green water habitat systems. This time, these will not fall under the national program. These will be done completely by the Delta River Unit. We're targeting communities such as Arupo, Brasso, Seco, and so on. Um, we're looking at check dams. We were very interested in the check dam system as explained to us by the Forestry Division. And um, we know that there are many areas in Trinidad and Tobago where we do have a lot of um, overland flow of water with heavy rains, which leads to erosion and leads to landslides and so on. So we're hoping to do some check dam projects and continuing with the riverbank stabilization initiatives and also some water supply initiatives. As part of our program, um, we are also interested in easing the situation that some members of the, the public face in terms of having a regular water supply. We know that the authority has been um, working very hard at meeting the needs of the communities, 
And we also want to play a role in that process. So whether it's through um, low technology inputs such as rainwater harvesting or through larger initiatives. So we have been speaking with the authority and looking for ways in which the Adopt River program can collaborate. Um, one of our goals really is among doing all of these projects is to develop a program of activities with the target community. So we're not just interested in going in and, and doing a check down or doing a rainwater harvester. We want to engage with them and get them to be um, actively involved in the management of their community in the management of their water resources and the watershed overall. The Adult River Unit has uh, what we call our mobile unit. This was donated to us by PP GCL, I'm not sure if I, if I said the right acronym, um, Phoenix Park Gas Producers Limited. I have no idea. Um, they'll forgive me, I'm sure. Um, we are grateful to have this bus. It has been outfitted as a mobile lab. And the idea is that we can take this lab throughout the country into various communities. We can demonstrate to them about water quality sampling and testing. We can share with them information about watershed management and about water resource management as a whole. So we've um, recently been able to get this lab up and running. I'm still working on our final tweaks to it. And uh, um, hopefully within this year, we'll be able to have this bus and it may be in a community near you. So please look out for us. Um, so those are our major plans going into this year. And we invite you to keep abreast of what's happening with the unit. We share news and updates regularly on our social media platform. So please follow us, check out our videos, send your comments. We're always interested in hearing your feedback. Um, we're also interested in knowing what's happening within your community, so feel free to reach out to us. Um, right now, I'd like to share with you just a brief video that sort of gives you our year in, in photos. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you.